Judging from the title and cover of Mega Tag Mention Blanc plus Neptune vs Zombies, you might think that this game is a cheesy Japanese title with cute anime girls fighting zombies, and for the most part, you'd be right. Looks can be misleading though, because there is more to this game than meets the eye, especially to those unfamiliar to the franchise like myself. I didn't know exactly what to expect from this game, as I have not played previous entries in the Neptunia series, but I can safely say that my time with this game was at the very least enjoyable. Here's my review of Mega Tag Mansion Blonde plus Neptune vs Zombies. The game's premise is simple enough, and I will do my best not to spoil anything past the beginning events of the game. Essentially, the beloved school of the main characters is going to be shut down because the number of students applying is lowering due to declining birth rates in the population. Because of this, the main characters decide to band together and save the school. This is where things get weird and interesting. To save the school, they decide to make a film with the hopes that it will entice others to enroll at the school. Directing this film would be the titular character Blonde, and also as the title suggests, the film is a zombie film. Now the premise is convoluted and a lot of the time the writing is as well, but this is what makes the game very interesting in my opinion. The game takes its premise and completely goes wild with it with constant meta jokes and self-aware humor. While the snark can be frequent, there is enough sincerity in it that it's not overbearing and even though the characters are tropey and archetypal, they are very endearing and seeing them interact with each other is probably the best part of the game's writing. This is complemented really well by the voice acting, which for an English localization dub is pretty solid. Overall, Mega Tag mentioned Blonde plus Neptune vs Zombies with its quirky meta humor kept me entertained for the hours I put into it. While the writing isn't groundbreaking, and at times it is way too snarky, the game's story has enough charm and humor to outweigh this. This game could have easily relied solely on its cute Moe premise to sell units. Luckily, the gameplay is solid all around for what you get. Single player is broken into chapters called scenes, very much fitting the movie theme, with each scene having levels called cuts. These levels are small areas with specific goals in order to complete the level. These usually default to killing all the enemies more often than not. After each level, you will receive a rank based on performance, and these levels are replayable for higher scores or rewards. For the most part, the scenery and map layout is pretty uninspired and dull. This doesn't help that most of the victory conditions for this game are often the same. Despite all this, playing the game is actually very fun. While victory conditions are the same for the most levels, the way you play is different depending on the characters you play. All the characters in the game's large roster play differently from each other with varying playstyles and combos to be learned. The story scenes also change depending on the two characters you choose at the start of each level, which adds replay value for those who want to view different scenes. As you play the game with the varying characters, they level up, gain new equipment, learn more combos, and gain stat points. Characters get progressively more powerful to combat the tougher enemies you fight as you progress through the story. While this growth isn't massive, it is a noticeable difference from when you start out. The actual task of killing waves of otaku zombies, robots, and other strange enemies is very satisfying and solid for the most part. The basic actions are dash, jump, light attack, heavy attack, with everything building off those actions. All these actions and more advanced techniques function very smoothly, with no clunkiness or lag to be found when executing them, which is complemented by a stable frame rate and decent character models. The varying characters, different combat styles, and moves help diversify the combat. While enemies become more difficult, the goal of killing everything on screen stays the same, so variation definitely helps the game from getting repetitive. While I don't have any real complaints about the combat, the autolock camera does sometimes have weird placement when your character's back is facing a wall. I feel that I should mention multiplayer gameplay, but unfortunately in my playthrough experience, I couldn't get into a game without people crashing or bugs, so for now at least, it's unplayable. Regardless of the not so great AI and lackluster level design, the overall good qualities of the game overshadow these less than stellar things I mentioned. I quite enjoyed my time with Mega Tag Mention. The game lacks polish in some visual and level elements, but that's my only real complaint. The meta humor, the story, the large character roster, and smooth action gameplay made me enjoy the game more than I thought I would. While I don't believe that this game will convince people to change their minds about the Neptunia series of games, I do think that this particular game is an overall fun experience, and I would definitely recommend it to those who are into this genre or enjoy the particular humor of this game. My rating for this game is a 3.5 out of 5.
And that is my review of Mega Tag Mansion Blonde plus Neptune vs Zombies. Feel free to leave a comment or like the video if you so desire. If you want to see more content, feel free to subscribe to the YouTube channel or check out our website heypoorplayer.com. If you'd like to see the full written review, I have left a link for that down below in the description. My name is Nathan of Hey Poor Player. Thank you so much for watching and have a good day.